Good day. This is a video I did not think I would be making. To me, it is definitely not just another video. This feels like the punchline to a joke that's been running for about eight years. If you're not familiar with chemist, scientist, mid-husband, father of eight, auto technician John Pendleton, well, you're missing out big time, but more importantly, this video is going to be a lot more entertaining if you understand some of the history. Specifically the history from Science in the Twelfth Century Episode 1 and Episode 5. For those of you who understand what that means, the pterosaur trap is a go, people. Hello, my name is John Pendleton, and I'm speaking to you from Zacatecas, Mexico, center of Mexico. Just take a second to digest this. I'm in no hurry here. Okay, I'm only going to get to do this once, I'm sure. This is like ten times more exciting to me than that time I found another John Pendleton episode of Carl Baugh's show. And that was exciting. So go a little easy on me if it seems like I'm meandering through this, taking my time, reminiscing a little bit. Because this, to me, is not just something to respond to. This is something to savor. So I found this completely by accident. I was watching some videos in Discord with some of my patrons, and we started to wonder about those mythical last seven episodes of John Pendleton's series that I responded to in Hello, I'm a Scientist. I'm fairly confident they exist. I'm quite sure there's supposed to be 20 episodes, but I never have been able to actually find them. And honestly, I would pay a pretty penny for them. Not any other random stuff he's made, but specifically the ones where he's standing there in a lab coat beside his potted plant in front of his curtain, be that red or blue, those episodes. But I never did manage to find them, so we were looking around, seeing if they'd made their way to the internet at some point, and I happened across this YouTube channel where John has uploaded videos in the past, just random webcam videos talking in Spanish, nothing of value to me, really. And all of those videos by this point are several years old. So I was looking through them, seeing what he had to offer, and I didn't even notice at first. This video here, Plan to Attract and Capture a Live Pterodactyl Dinosaur in Mexico. December 9th, 2020. Now to put that in perspective, those original videos with John talking to Carl Baugh about his plan to catch a pterosaur in Mexico are somewhere in the general area of 15 years old. I'm not sure exactly, my guess is they were probably made around 2006 or 2007, but they're definitely fairly old. This is something he's been planning to do at least that long, and I've been making fun of him for planning to do for like half that amount of time. I guess it just took a lot of planning and preparation, you know how it is. You wouldn't want to jump right into a dinosaur hunt while you're young and fit, and while the iron's hot. You know, when you've just gathered up all your eyewitness evidence, you wouldn't want to do it then. No, what you want to do is wait a decade and a half, until there's a pretty good chance that whatever pterosaur there might have been is long gone, half of your witnesses are probably dead, and you're old and decrepit. Now, okay, I mock, but we have to remember the sightings John's chasing are in Mexico, so he has to make travel arrangements, you know, 15 year long visa applications and so forth to travel to another country. Actually, never mind, I forgot he lives in Mexico, he's lived in Mexico this whole time. Alright, well look, the travel's not a big deal, but the budget, yeah, the, the, it's expensive, really expensive. 20 years worth of savings expensive. Although in this video he's gonna present us with a budget, and I think any sufficiently motivated auto-applied scientist could have put that money together in a lot less than 20 years. We'll get back to that. So anyway, where was I here? I'm kind of doing this off the cuff, because I'm just excited and I want to. But that means I also keep losing track of what I'm doing. So... Next clip. And today I'm going to tell you of my project to attract and capture a real living pterodactyl dinosaur. He still hasn't figured out that pterodactyls are not dinosaurs. I also suspect he hasn't figured out that not all pterosaurs are pterodactyls. Let me explain. Please, sir, for you, anything. The floor is yours. And that beautiful plants. Is that the famous plant? Your co-star? Nah, leaves are too small, clearly a different species. Shame, I would've liked to see that plant again. It's almost as beloved as you are. Uh, I'm originally from Wisconsin. I've been a missionary here in central Mexico since 1984 with my wife and family. Man, that plant's really getting up in your business. I think it likes you. In 1991, I began developing a creation science talk. Uh, I gave my first one in 1994 to some 200 people in a church in Guadalajara. Uh, by the year 2000, I had seven half-hour uh, conferences, including one on dinosaurs. I'm digging the name tag. Is that laminated? Or is it in one of those card sleeve things? I hope it's laminated. That's swanky. You deserve it after all these years of contributions to chemistry, John. A Canadian friend of mine called me and asked me if there were pterodactyl sightings in Mexico. As you do. Pretty normal thing to ask. I said no, but I would check with my Huichol friend, Christian friend. Uh, the Huichol people is a uh, indigenous uh, national 
uh, natural native uh, Mexican. Just to be clear, is that relevant somehow to the Terrasar stuff? Or, like, why do I even need to know what ethnic group this guy's from? I'm fine with it, it just seems random. Uh, well, Adolfo came to my house the next day. And I immediately went to my computer and lifted off some 12 drawings of pterodactyls, printed them out on a sheet of paper on both sides. I went with Adolfo and I said, have you ever seen any of these? He looked down the first page of six, no, turned it over and he pointed to the second one, uh, this image here that I'm putting up. Your friend saw a cartoon pteranodon. Um, and I said, well, when did you see those? He said, well, that was 14 years old. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, they were attacking our people and our animals and things. And finally, the, the leaders of our community said, that's it, that's enough. And so they went up to the caves nearby our community and built fires in the mouth of the caves. The smoke went in, the animals came out, they killed them all, big and small. Okay, hold on, how many animals were there? Were there like two or three, or was this a huge swarm? I mean, these are flying reptiles we're talking about, right? Even if these people were armed with guns, it'd be pretty easy for one of these animals to slip past, you would think. I don't know, maybe there's just tons of people with guns and a small exit to the cave. I guess it's plausible that they could manage to kill them all, especially if there were only a few animals. Kind of seems like an odd strategy, though, when you're dealing with a flying animal. Like, if you wanted to kill a bunch of bats, you probably wouldn't try to smoke them out. You'd probably try to seal them in, especially if there was only one entrance to the cave. Or at least if all the entrances were known. Which apparently was the case, because they used the smoking technique, which only really works if you know where the thing's gonna come out. Sealing them in instead of trying to smoke them out would eliminate the risk of the animals getting away and re-establishing themselves elsewhere. But whatever, not everyone uses great strategies. So if they killed them all, what did they do with them? Did they take them home and eat them? If not, why not? And if so, did somebody at least save the skeletons or at least the skulls? I mean, this is a massive creature, right? We're talking wingspans potentially up to like 20 feet or more. This is no small thing to have killed. I mean, the skull of this thing surely would look great on a wall. It's the kind with the big crest on top. Surely this event would go down in the history of the people as uh, something of very huge importance. I mean, this is within your friend's living memory, but has this event had any impact on these people's culture? Do they tell stories about it to this day? I mean, why haven't you heard about this? They basically slayed a pack of dragons. Especially when you consider that apparently pterosaurs have caustic poisonous breath that makes them incredibly deadly to encounter. How'd they get around that? Did they have gas masks? Quite often, their, uh, their breath is quite toxic. In fact, individuals have been known to die from inhaling the fumes. Mm. So be very, very careful. These creatures often exude a compound through their skin that is very caustic mm. and toxic to human flesh. Mm. And they're able to, uh, just with the exhalation uh, from their lungs, to sometime poison individuals and sometime kill individuals now who've gotten too close. That's bad breath. That's <laughs> bad breath. Sure, your friend told you this tale, but what I'm trying to get at is, is there actually any sign of this being true beyond what your friend says? What sort of questions did you ask as a follow-up? I mean, he's making an incredibly extraordinary claim. So you must have kind of pressed him on it, right? And then what I said. Well, he said, since then I haven't seen him. And that's the end of the interview. At least as far as John reports it, so I assume there was nothing else important that came up. Good work, Detective Pendleton. He was 40 years old when I <clears throat> made this interview with him. Yeah, wow, young. So 26 years previously, this happened. That's within relatively recent memory for a lot of people he knew back then. So they should all be able to tell you the same story, right? You should be able to go to them and say, Hey, you remember that time with those creatures that were eating all your animals? And presumably, once you say that, a bunch of the somewhat older people, middle-aged people, or older, should immediately start telling you the same story. Maybe they can even show you some evidence that it happened. Maybe one of them saved the skull. Maybe it's sitting in their backyard. Or maybe not. Which seems more likely. Either way, though, I don't quite understand your strategy here, John, if you want to find out whether this is actually true. In 2007, I loaned this book to uh, the seven-year-old daughter, uh, our cleaning lady. Uh, I went into the kitchen and the work area in the kitchen that overlooked the dining area. I was making my coffee, and the lady came and looked over at the pages. Her daughter was flipping and said, oh, they see those in the village I'm from. They see what? Which page was she on? I mean, the kid's just flipping through the pages, right? So which specific thing are we talking about here? I says, you're kidding. 
I said, you're going to take me out to your village. Hey, okay. That's a reasonable first step if you actually want to find out the truth. So my male secretary and I... I believe the technical term for that, John, is secra husband. This lady and her children, we went out to the to village less than three hours drive from here. And I met different people that had seen the big bird. The big bird. Well, that's not exactly very specific, is it? I mean, for example, if they saw a frigate bird, that's a pretty big bird, and it could reasonably be mistaken for certain kinds of pterosaurs. Definitely while in flight. Its tail feathers even kind of look like feet sticking out the back. So, okay, they saw a big bird, but what do they have to say about it? Did they ever shoot one? Did they ever eat one? Do they have a skull? Do they have a skeleton? Do they have anything? For that matter, which specific pterosaur did they say it looks like? And did they see it up close or just in flight at a distance? There's a million questions we could come up with, right? But you know what? I'm sure you got to all of it because Detective Pendleton, yeah, he faltered a little bit at the start with the other guy, but he's on the case now. You traveled three whole hours to get to this village, so you must have really gone in depth here. Uh, since I give creation, that was the beginning of uh, knowing that there are any at all in Mexico. I'm not sure I'm understanding you here, John. That was the beginning of you knowing what exactly? I mean, what did they tell you? What did they show you? What happened in the village? Are you even going to tell me? You're not even going to tell me, are you? You're just going to move along like as if that answers any questions. I went to the village, and then I knew that there were pterosaurs in Mexico. And also, like, this woman didn't say, when I was 14 years old, we saw these things once, right? She said, wow, they see these in my village. They see those in the village I'm from. Meaning it's a regular occurrence. Or at least an occasional occurrence, but up to the current date. So did you stick around? Did you say, can you tell me where you see them, what time of day you see them, what time of year you see them, so I can check it out for myself? Or did you just show up and then go, yep, so there's pterosaurs, and then bugger off home? Because that's what it sounds like. Uh, since I give... Creation talks all over Mexico. I, I met people that told me that they've seen them. Okay, and again, what did they tell you? I'm not even going to pretend like eyewitness testimony is great evidence. I mean, there's tons of people who say they've seen the Sasquatch and Ogopogo too. But if you're going to tell me secondhand about what these people said, you could at least tell me what they said. You could recap your interviews with them, the questions you asked them, what their answers were. Not that you should have to, really. I mean, at a certain point here, you should have realized, wow, there's a lot of people here who are telling me all the same thing about these pterosaurs. I should probably buy a camcorder and interview them on camera so that I can preserve the record. But apparently not. Apparently the entire record is, I talked to people, and the people told me stuff. Well, can't argue with that. Here's a map of Mexico with a number of indicated uh, places where there have been sightings. According to who? You know, honestly, basic reporting. Who, what, when, where, why, right? The why might seem unnecessary until you think about it in terms of why do you think it's a pterosaur. I mean, that's what we need to even have the basics of a story. If you don't have that, you don't have anything at all. Uh, here are some more specific testimonies. Oh, good. Well, at least there's some of those. Uh, Adolfo. That's your friend from before, right? Who participated in smoking out a nest of pterosaurs and then never saw any ever again? Saw this creature that he's pointing to in my book. Uh, in a river up in the mountains. All right, well, I'm going to lean on past me to address this. Uh, I've addressed this more than once. The first time leaves something to be desired. You telling us that somebody else told you that they saw something is definitely not evidence. On an unrelated note, um, I have a friend who says that they saw you raping your mother. So according to you, I have hard evidence that you raped your mother. If you reject this evidence, it's just you being hard-headed. So come on, admit it. Oh, 2013 logic, you are something else. So instead, for a response that's not completely stupid, let's go to 2018 logic. Wait a minute, zoom in. Enhance. Enhance. Enhance, damn you! John! That's not a pterosaur, it's a gliding lizard! Did you even look at what he's pointing at? It's an Icarosaurus, it has a 10-inch wingspan. And yes, I said 10 inches, not 10 feet. And that guy picked it out of that book and pointed it out himself. All while apparently claiming to have seen a pterosaur. Well, John, maybe your friend really did see a flying lizard like that. We still have them today. I don't think they really have them in Mexico. They're more like an Asian thing, but it could be an escaped pet or something. Or maybe your friend's just really bad at identifying animals, which is pretty obvious if he thought that obvious lizard with four legs separate from its bone-filled wings was a pterosaur. Jesus, John Morris Pendejo. If you're gonna get your buddies to point at a book so you can pretend like it's evidence of pterosaurs, at least coach them to point at an actual pterosaur, not a few-inch-long 
Flying Lizard. Yeah, that about covers it. I guess my only real nitpick would be it's not actually a lizard. I mean, obviously it looks very lizard-like, but not technically a lizard. Now, one thing I don't believe I've addressed at any point is when you said this. But it was a large, it was about two and a half, well, two and a half to three meters. Let's see, that's about an eight to ten foot wingspan. So the guy spotted an Icarosaurus with not an eight to ten inch wingspan, but an eight to ten foot wingspan. Really? And you expect me to believe this guy's not just having a laugh, or completely screwing up his identification of species. And his eyeballing of wingspan measurements, too. I mean, what other options are there here? This is ridiculous. And yet another thing to point out is in this video, unlike the other videos, you actually identify the species yourself. Here's the image. Apparently it's a Charovipteryx. I'm guessing that's how I pronounce that. Now, here's an artistic representation of a Charovipteryx. As you can see, what this thing's known for is it has gliding membranes on its back legs. It's extremely different than the Icarosaurus that you show. But at the very least, we might think, okay, at least it must have an 8 to 10 foot wingspan because, you know, then it matches Adolfo's story. But no, the whole animal's 25 centimeters long. So you yourself picked the species to identify this as, and not only does it not look anything like the picture, and by the way, not only is this your book that you have him picking this out of, you could have just read the goddamn caption, but also, you picked a tiny little creature to identify it as that is completely inconsistent with everything that you've said about this. Oh, and by the way, that book he's holding is your illustrated encyclopedia of pterosaurs. You can tell by the bit of the cover that's visible. And do you notice how it doesn't just have pterosaurs in it? So again, your cleaning lady who was looking over her daughter's shoulder while her daughter flipped through this book and said, oh wow, we see those in our village. See what? Specifically what? What page? What picture? Why is it, John, that every time you tell us something it's either lacking any useful information whatsoever, or the information makes no sense and is completely self-contradictory? Uh, he had occasion to cross the river some seven times in 15 days. People from the village came out and saw it also. Eventually it began to corrode away and the river carried it off. So just to be clear, the people of the village said they saw a small lizard-like organism, either with gliding wings sticking out of its side or attached to its back legs, depending on whether we take your picture or your caption as true. And it had like an 8-inch or 10-inch wingspan, right? Is that what you're saying? Or are they saying that they saw this animal, but with a 3-meter wingspan, dead in the river? You know, I'm almost curious to hear what their side of the story even is, if they even have one. I mean, again, you're not getting this from them. You're getting this from Adolfo, who I'm starting to think might be trolling the hell out of you. And he said he crossed this stream a number of times. Other people saw him. I says, why didn't you pick it up? It was worth a million dollars. But eventually it just corroded and the stream oh, washed yes. it away. Yes. See, it's not them who say it, it's him. Just him. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't just say, oh yeah, this one I've seen, that one I've seen, that one I saw, that one ate my grandmother in front of me, that one burned down my village with its toxic breath. I mean, this is the same guy who told you the story about smoking out a whole family of them in a cave, and then oddly said that he didn't see them ever again, until he said he did, and pointed to this little nonsense gliding lizard type thing. I mean, how good of a friend is this guy to you? Are you sure he's not just laughing his ass off behind your back? Uh, this bus driver was coming down a winding road in the southwestern part of my state here. Uh, it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He had his 19-year-old son and about a dozen adult passengers, and they saw this creature gliding uh, some 20 to 40 yards from the bus. All right, a couple things. So number one, you say they're coming down a winding road. What are we talking about here exactly? Something like a mountain with switchbacks? Because if I was driving down a mountain on a road full of switchbacks, and I saw off the edge of the drop a bird flying around, because of the lack of nearby reference points to actually compare its size to, I would be hard pressed to tell you just how big that bird was, or how close. Now that's a small but definitely non-trivial point, which more broadly is that it can be really goddamn hard to identify the size of a flying animal in flight. You just lack good reference points, it's really easy to be fooled. But I think the more important point has to do with the fact that you have a caption there saying that this bird has a 17 to 20 foot wingspan. And I think we can go back to 2018 logic to handle this. Sorties, a pterosaur with a 2 foot 
wingspan. It doesn't even superficially look like a giant pterosaur. As soon as I saw that picture before I identified it by finding the full resolution image, my guess was its wingspan was probably around three feet just based on its appearance. And as it turns out, I was too generous. It doesn't have the weird body shape of something like a Quetzalcoatlus. It doesn't have a crest or anything else that would make it a little bit more difficult to confuse with a bat or a bird. Nope, its appearance is about as close to a modern day flying animal as you can get without actually being one. I wonder why that might be. So John, considering that this witness identified his sighting as a pterosaur ten times too small, and considering the other witness didn't even manage to point at anything resembling a pterosaur, it's starting to sound almost like I had a point when I questioned the accuracy of people's perception, isn't it? Could it be, John, is it conceivable in your world that these people just didn't get as good a look as you think they did? That their memory of the event isn't as good as you'd like to think it is? That maybe none of them know what the hell they're talking about? Is that a possibility to you? If they fail this badly at identifying the animals from memory, is it really such a stretch to think the animals they failed to identify weren't pterosaurs at all? Why thank you, 2018 Logic, I think that pretty much covers it. I honestly find it kind of unbelievable that after all these years, this is still the best John has to offer us. Nothing new, just the same old crap he was offering up on Carl Baugh's show back in like 2006 or 7. Even though this whole thing is obvious nonsense, he should have at least been able to come up with some fresh nonsense in that amount of time, you would think. Well, as I said, I'm taking my sweet time on this because I really want to savor this. So I'm going to cut it here for now and come back for a second part of it. Who knows, maybe John's come up with something fresh and we'll see it in the next half. Thanks for watching. Please do give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. Enormous thanks to all of my supporters on every platform. If you enjoy the channel, please do consider supporting it on Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, any of that stuff. The people who do that are the lifeblood of the channel and I could not be more grateful. Also, email list, early access, list.logict.com. If you want alt tech, I got an Odyssey channel. Invite link in the description that never seems to work for most people. Not my fault, don't blame me, I wish it worked too. Anyway, see you next time.